today's modern military jet aircraft are reliable and long-lasting. Their powerful turbojet engines provide the thrust for speeds in excess of Mach 2. These mighty gas turbines consume huge quantities of air, which are accelerated to tremendous velocities at the engine intakes. This air consumption is a basic ingredient of thrust. It is also a potential source of disaster. Here's a new replacement engine, ready to deliver hundreds of hours of service. Brand new. And yet, this engine can be rendered useless before it ever leaves the ground by an object no larger than a screwdriver, or a cigarette lighter, or a 10 30 seconds bolt. Engine compressor damage due to the ingestion of foreign objects has been a serious problem ever since the inception of gas turbine engines. Air Force safety reports indicate that foreign object damage has been the primary or contributing cause of many aircraft accidents and incidents. In addition, FOD is the number one cause of jet engine overhaul. Estimates of the cost to the Air Force have been as high as $50 million a year. Each time an engine is removed because of FOD, the following costs pile up. Removal and handling time, freight charges to and from the repair depot, and the actual repair and overhaul cost itself. In addition, FOD increases new engine and spare parts procurement. FOD increases maintenance and supply workloads. And most important, FOD decreases overall defense preparedness. Foreign objects have included aircraft and engine hardware, a full inventory of maintenance tools, miscellaneous personal effects, and stones, pebbles, and chunks of broken runway. Entering through the air intake system, foreign objects encounter the rotor or moving blades of the compressor. Between the rotor blade stages are the stator or stationary blades. These stator blades tend to block the passage of a foreign object, bouncing it back at the rotor blades, which again propel it through the compressor. The thin leading and trailing edges of these airfoils are extremely susceptible to foreign objects. The bulk of this damage consists of small gouges and nicks, which, if not detected and repaired, can eventually induce or accelerate fatigue failures. A fatigued compressor blade, if it should break off, could completely wreck an engine. Foreign object damage can and must be prevented. A complete FOD program starts at the manufacturer's plant. Precautionary measures and inspection procedures combine to prevent loose or foreign objects getting into the engine or airframe during assembly. A look at the production operations of a major airframe manufacturer will establish this. The FOD prevention program begins with an inspection of the aircraft engine, fresh from the shipping container. The first and second stage compressor blades are checked and any nicks or dents are examined to determine if they are within acceptable limits. Wooden covers are immediately installed over the engine intake and aft openings. An inspection port permits examination of the critical ninth stage with a borescope tool. After engine buildup, the covers are removed and the aft and intake areas are given a final inspection. The openings are then recovered and remain sealed throughout the assembly flow until just prior to first engine run. FOD prevention is also a major concern in all of the other assembly areas. Fuselage sections, winglets, duct plugs, and wing assemblies are tumbled and tapped to detect foreign objects. Any loose material disclosed by these procedures 
is removed. All holes are closed with a special sealant to prevent foreign materials from passing from one area to another. The center fuselage section is given a rigorous inspection to prevent foreign objects from being trapped in closed areas. And duct riveting is closely examined for quality of workmanship. The openings of all assemblies are covered and sealed with protective covers to prevent accidental entry of foreign objects during transportation and installation. A team of FOD inspectors operates in both sub-assembly and final assembly areas. Specially trained for their jobs, these men make the final inspections just before each section is sealed and released for installation. Design features support the FOD prevention program. All access doors forward of the engine air inlets are hinged and specially designed seals are used in the bell crank openings. A mesh screen with openings smaller than the smallest hardware prevents objects from entering the auxiliary air intake doors. And a set of disposable covers is used to seal inlet openings. Sucker doors and bleed vanes up to the time of first engine run. Before the release from final assembly, another inspection is performed. And all engine inlets are given a thorough vacuuming and are resealed. The practice of good housekeeping carries over into hangar and flight line operations, where every precaution is taken to ensure that no foreign objects are ingested during the flight test phase. Flight line intake covers are kept on when the engine is not running. FOD containers are located in all strategic areas. And all ramps, taxiways and runways are swept and inspected each day. These precautions and procedures in manufacturing did not provide a total solution to the fleet's overall FOD problem. Consequently, the Air Force established a full-scale test program to evaluate operational conditions suspected of causing foreign object damage. A production aircraft was selected right off the final assembly line and a special 10 by 10 mesh screen was installed over the engine face to trap any foreign objects that might be ingested. Screens were also installed over the ports and vents of the forward fuselage to prevent objects from leaving the fuselage and being sucked into the engine. All screens were examined before and after each test for damage and trapped objects. Following a normal production fuel flow test, the engine and face screen combination was given a bare engine run in the muffler to determine engine parameters. An approximate 8% drop in engine performance due to the face screen installation prompted the decision to simulate all takeoffs and landings. With the engine and face screen combination installed, the test aircraft was cycled through the normal production workstation. A standard production gun firing was performed in an effort to shake out any loose hardware. None was detected. To further the possibility of jarring loose any hardware, eight aborted takeoffs were performed on the normally maintained clean runway. These tests involved taxiing to the active runway firing the afterburner and accelerating to 120 knots before aborting the run and deploying the drag chute. The ninth stage was bore scoped through the fuselage access door before and after each of the eight tests and all screens were examined. Results were negative. In connection with the FOD program, a preliminary investigation was conducted to determine the probability of ingesting runway debris due to vortex formation between the ground and the engine air inlets. Crepe paper strips on a wire grid were moved into the airstream at various heights. The strips were influenced by the airflow at all levels, but no evidence of a vortex was noticed. Another method for creating rotational flow 
utilized a fan exhausting into a spiral-shaped shroud. A fine spray of water showed the flow within the shroud to be rotational. However, the flow into the inlet was not. All attempts to force vortex formation during these tests were entirely unsuccessful. To increase the possibility of ingesting foreign objects, a section of the runway was prepared with gravel of various sizes. This test demonstrated that it was impossible to draw the gravel up into the ducts. Two taxi runs and simulated takeoffs were performed next with a test vehicle in trail behind another aircraft. These tests were designed to determine just how close two aircraft may get during ground operations before incurring foreign object damage. A high-speed motion picture camera recorded the effects from the ground level. And another mounted on the forward fuselage photographed the left intake. These scenes, photographed at 200 frames per second, show how, in the second test, the jet exhaust of the lead aircraft blew large quantities of gravel back at the test plane, where many pieces were ingested by the air intakes. This was the only instance during the entire program when foreign objects were ingested. High-speed photography of the single airplane under the same runway conditions showed no foreign objects being ingested. Comparison of the two test runs made under abnormally dirty conditions showed that by decreasing the tail to duct distance and the center line to center line distance, the rear aircraft came within the jet wake of the lead plane, where it was subjected to a shower of foreign objects. Further study shows that the jet wake, or exhaust envelope, varies in size, depending on the throttle setting. At idle setting, the jet wake is approximately 70 feet long and 10 feet wide. At 80% of RPM, the average taxi setting, the wake is approximately 110 feet long and 15 feet wide. The wake at military rated power is approximately 180 feet by 20 feet. And with maximum afterburner, the wake gets as large as 310 feet long and 40 feet wide. Turning maneuvers and crosswinds must also be taken into consideration. Thus, the tail to duct distance proved to be a critical factor in ground operations and a potential source of foreign object damage. Manufacturers have made considerable progress in controlling the FOD problem. And their efforts, along with those of the operating commands, have demonstrated what can be accomplished. Results of the test program have shown that a major cause of foreign object damage to operational aircraft can be eliminated by restricting ground operations so that jet blast is avoided. Every effort should be made to avoid the operational danger zones by close attention to the limitations of trail and offset distances indicated in the TOs. Improved maintenance practices, as detailed in Air Force Manual 66-3, have also contributed to reduction of FOD. Technicians should account for and properly dispose of all NG hardware. Track down the source of any hardware found in the vicinity of the aircraft. A bolt lying loose in an intake could raise havoc with the compressor blades. Inventory all tools before walking away from the aircraft. A mislaid pair of pliers could turn a simple repair job into a $25,000 overhaul. Today's modern military jet aircraft are reliable and long-lasting. Keep them 
combat ready. Prevent F.O.D.